In a previous video, we developed a test which helps us determine whether a particular force is conservative or non-conservative. The idea is that we take a mass and send the mass around a closed path while that force is acting on the mass. We then compare the kinetic energy of the mass at the beginning of the motion with the kinetic energy of the mass as it returns to the starting point. If the force is conservative, then the force will do a total work of zero on the mass, and then the kinetic energy of the mass at the end and the kinetic energy of the mass at the beginning will be the same. On the other hand, if the force is non-conservative, then most likely the total work done by the force will be non-zero, which will mean that the kinetic energy at the end of the motion and the kinetic energy at the beginning of the motion will be different. We're going to apply that test to the gravitational force. I'm going to start with this bowling ball held against my chin, and I'm going to release the bowling ball with an initial kinetic energy of zero. After I release the bowling ball, when the bowling ball is on the way down, gravity will be doing positive work, and then on the way up, gravity will do negative work, and then on the backswing, more positive work followed by more negative work. If the gravitational force is conservative, then the total work done around that entire path will be zero, and the bowling ball will return to my chin once again with a kinetic energy of zero. On the other hand, if the gravitational force is non-conservative, the bowling ball will either not make it all the way back or make it back to my chin with a bit of extra kinetic energy. So let's do the experiment. We see that the bowling ball returns to my chin with a kinetic energy of zero, and thus we know that the gravitational force is conservative.